What's up everyone? Alex Boylan here, co-founder of Dream Jobbing, and I couldn't be more excited to have my good friend Frank Pace here, legendary Emmy award-winning producer here in Hollywood, uh, a very long and successful career, 700 episodes of television shows from George Lopez show, Suddenly Susan, Murphy Brown, which is making a comeback right now. It's already coming back, yes, <laughs> Shake it up, you've done sports documentaries. His, his list of credits goes on and on and on. So, Frank, thanks for sitting down doing five questions you with You bet, I like that I look taller than you as well. <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. So, um, Frank, I guess the first question is weird, and I wanna tell everyone, by the way, Frank and I have one thing in common. This is where we go back to. We're both alumni of Jacksonville University. Yes, we are. We both are business majors. Then. And we're both soccer players. And we're both soccer players. Yeah, pretty awesome. So uh, I have a lot. But to not on the same team. Not on the same <laughs> team at the same time. But um, so Frank, where did the whole this whole entertainment career for you begin? When did you, was this a, was it by happenstance or were you saying like, I want to go work in Hollywood? I didn't, it, it was by, pure happenstance. Uh, I just walked through any door that opened up for me. I was in professional sports for a couple of years and then I segued into advertising for seven years and it was while I was in advertising that I started do it, working for ESPN. Mm -hmm. uh, and I start shooting some shows for ESPN and I also almost became a producer by accident. Uh, I hired somebody to produce a, a racquetball series for us and the second day I fired him <laughs> and I took over. <laughs> and after that I was just, uh, just constantly learning, constantly learning. Mm -hmm. And then I got a break uh, with a fella at Warner Brothers by the name of Steve Papazian mm -hmm. who asked me to be associate producer on a show called Head of the Class and it just took off from there. Wow, awesome. Just n knock, open it. Uh, Walking through any doors that opened up. Yeah, and uh, I mean, that's kind of what this business is all about, right? Yes, yep. Um, when you look back on it, what do you think is the most challenging aspect of this business and of your journey as you look back of, of building such a successful career? Well, a challenging thing will be, you know, nobody really wants you to succeed. You have to succeed on your own. And there are bullets flying around, all of which that can hit you. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be like, uh, you know, that that show where the guy was dodging all the bullets. What was that? Uh, Dodgeball? <laughs> no, <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> no, I, well, it was, you know, all these bullets are flying around yeah. and anyone can hit you and take you out at any moment. You've got you to gotta stay calm. You've got to stay prepared and you've got to do your job. Uh, so much of this business is becoming people wanting to just get a good re recommendation mm -hmm. so they get their next job. I never worried about good recommendations. I always did the job as well as I could do it. Some people would be pissed off at me. Some people <laughs> would love me, uh, but nobody ever fired me. <laughs> That's great. What do you think um, you credit, whether it was your, your work ethic, what do you, when you look back, what was it that you think that helped you be so successful? I just think it was work ethic, mm -hmm. work ethic and a lot of luck. I mean, anybody who is successful in this business and doesn't say they're lucky is bullshitting you. <laughs> so you have to be lucky. For example, my first show was head of the class. It stayed on the air for five years. If, and during that time, I did the pilot for Murphy Brown. I did the pilot for Ferris Bueller and I established a reputation. If head of the class had gone off after 13 episodes, I would have not had the chance to right. find and, and and establish my reputation. Yeah, yeah. Is there luck in there? And then also, like sometimes, like picking the right projects. You know, Lisa, you know, co-founder of Dream Job as well. She talks about that a lot. And you look at her career. It was like you know she picked the right projects early on. You know, that really helped um, you know propel that career. Well, I was fortunate again. Steve Papazian was a, an executive at Warner Brothers at the time. He's now retired, and he liked what I was doing. So he would automatically send me Warner Brothers best pilot. That's how I got Murphy Brown. Wow. Uh, that's how I got For Your Love. That's how I got Something Wilder. That's how I got George Lopez. They were just sending me their best projects and all I had to do was 
pull them off. Uh, so awesome, awesome, awesome projects too. I mean, these are these are classic shows, and um, not to go into it, but it's amazing that Murphy Brown now is being redone, right? 30 years, 30, 30 years <laughs> later. It's, and he was telling me before, early before we started recording that it's a lot of the same crew, right? Well, it's not the same crew because we're shooting in New York, but uh -huh. it's the same cast. Okay, yeah. And it's the same writers. Diane English is the executive producer. She hired me 30 years ago <laughs> on a brief interview that Steve Papazian set up. Uh, and then she hired me 30 years later uh, on a series of texts. <laughs> I sent her a text. I said, congratulations. She said, too bad you won't go to New York. I said, who says I won't, know, who says I won't go to New York? Uh, she said, Peter Ross' office will call you tomorrow. Uh, and that's how I got the job. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, Frank, you have helped a lot of young producers throughout your years. You have hired a lot of young producers throughout your years. You've given me a ton of advice. Um, and I remember something, Frank. I remember some advice you gave me a long time ago. Maybe I'll wait for it after you talk and I'll, I'll touch in on base on this. But um, for young kids out there, you know, this series is for younger people trying to break into the entertainment business for, for this episode. What's your advice to them? You know, is there a secret sauce to, or is there come some kind of tip or tangible advice that you'd be like, listen, if you want to break into Hollywood, this is what you got to do, kid. You have to be persistent. Uh, if after 50, 50 no's, you give up, you're unlucky. Mm -hmm. If after 500 no's, somebody says, yes, you're lucky. <laughs> uh, yeah. You yeah. have to learn to network. Mm -hmm. When you get a show, you have to learn everybody's name on the crew list, but more importantly, everybody has to know your name mm -hmm. and have to know what you do. Uh, and you have to be lucky, mm -hmm. as yeah. I said. So um, we're, uh, this is about 20 years ago. First show I ever hosted was a show called At the Chef's Table. Frank, you called me and you gave me some advice. Do you remember what that advice was? And actually, this might have been a couple, this might have been after a few episodes of hosting the show. But I'm gonna tell you your advice. Okay. All right. Frank first congratulated me. He's like, wow, you're, you're hosting a show. This is awesome, Alex. You know, congratulations on that. And you quickly went in and you said, you know what you need to do? Learn to produce. Yeah. You want to be sitting here and like where I am, decades of working in this unbelievable business, hosting, you might work, might not, learn to produce. And I never forgot that advice. And on that same show, I was like producing by the end of the season. So I've always appreciated that. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, I always thought you could be a great host and on-camera talent, but I always thought you had greater production experience that you could utilize and you would be a natural producer. Thank you, well, I appreciate it. All right, so Frank, fifth and final question. This question comes from John. He's in 11th grade from Wisconsin. Who is your favorite actor that you've worked with and why? And I'm sure that's probably the hardest question to answer, huh? Okay, I, <laughs> I've worked from a lot of incredible people from, Jennifer, from A to Z, right. from Jennifer Aniston <laughs> to Zendaya. Right. Uh, I've always, I, I, I've liked so many people. I like Candace Bergen, I like George Lopez, I like Brooke Shields, I like Zendaya. I mean, I like Don Rickles. Uh, I can't just pick one because I would have to leave out 50 or so. Right. So, I mean, I've been blessed by having worked with great talent, Gene Wilder. Uh, so many people, uh, the, the, Real question would be, who didn't I like to work with? <laughs> but that would be a sixth question and you only get five. <laughs> well, perfect way to end it. Mr. Pace, thank you for giving a little bit of time. Thank you, you for giving advice to the, all the students out there. We appreciate it. All right, guys, Alex, Frank, um, that's it. We'll, uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.